Warning, the following video was rated M for mm, If you're young, you shouldn't watch this, so viewer discretion is advised. But hey, I won't tell if you won't. So I beat Dark Souls 3 like two days after it was released, and while I enjoyed the game for the most part, as I was going through it, I did see a few irks. And that's a word, right? I don't know, but as I was playing, I noticed some issues that really stuck out to me. And now that I've had some time to dwell on the game a little bit, talk to some other people about it, get their perspective on things, and overall, we all kind of notice some of the same hiccups. Now, a little bit of info for you. I've played and beaten every Souls game. From Demon Souls to Bloodborne, I've seen it all. And while I don't consider myself an expert at the games, if anything, I see myself as queen casual because I love exploits, I consider the Souls series one of my favorite franchises and I feel like I'm in a position to talk about the most difficult series ever made. Ah, just kidding, we all know that title goes to Pony World 3. Now, is this a review for Dark Souls 3? Uh, kinda not really. I mostly just want to talk about where Dark Souls 3 stands on my favorite Souls game list, some of the things I did right, some of the things I did wrong, and just kinda Dark Souls rambles in general. Because why not? I'm yelling into this microphone, might as well get my feelings out because I make funnies on the internet, and that somehow makes my opinion important for some folks. No clue why though. So bear with me people, and no hand-holding in this video because I'm gonna talk like you know the Souls games too. But let me complain about stuff from my small, petty perspective. And guys, friendly reminder for those ready to strike in the comments, you can still like something and find problems with it. Because surprise, surprise, blindly loving something isn't normally the best approach, now is it? Now, let's talk about the things I noticed right off the bat with Dark Souls 3. Number one, is it just me or is this game mega short compared to the others? Like, I did a complete blind playthrough, saw like 90% of the game, and then went to see what I had missed, which turns out it was that one secret area no one would find on their own, and turns out, that was it! Like, I double checked in everything. I covered the world top to bottom and beat the game in under 30 hours. Blind. Is that bad? Sure feels like it to me. And there's always the argument of, well, you're just familiar with Souls design, and yuck, yuck, yuck. And, well, being familiar with how these games go, I can see your point, but the problem is, I didn't have this issue with the original Dark Souls 2. I went into that knowing what I was doing, and it took me like 70 plus hours, and I still miss stuff. I know there's PvP and New Game Plus, and yeah, but the world feels awfully small. Or again, maybe it's because I know what I I'm doing, but I don't know. It sure does feel like this game needs the DLC packs we know are coming. And while withholding content just for DLC is another topic for another time, uh, the world feels lacking in that secret area sector, you feel? Number two, Bloodborne 2 came out in 2016 and everyone was like, oh wait, it's just Dark Souls 3. Now, this isn't really a complaint, it's just something that became painfully obvious as I went through the game. I get that Miyazaki was working on Bloodborne and this kind of side-by-side hints the year gap between release states and some of the more creative choices for the game maybe started to blur together, but minus the aesthetics, this game feels an awful lot like Bloodborne because of the speed, enemy aggression, and well, you can't tell me these monsters couldn't be in Bloodborne. Granted, the games are made in the same engine, and perhaps certain assets or monsters that didn't make their way into Bloodborne got a new coat of paint and made it into this game. Perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like some of these enemies really belong in this world because the player is restricted to how Dark Souls normally plays, which is slow, technical, methodical, but the enemies are mega Bloodborne aggressive and it's very jarring. And in some situations, it really feels like the enemies were designed to have the regain system there, but it's not. And I get that they sped up the player's actions as well, but by no means is it on par with the enemies. Like, damn son, slow down. Ah, yeah, this is too much for me. I need a nap. Number three. This game isn't very balanced. Oh, I know. The Souls games are hard. Get good, you catch. Uh, the funny jokes are funny, guys. Of course, what I mean is Dark Souls 3 noticeably favorites the Night and Glass Cannon build, and nothing else, really. I keep hearing horror stories of people going in as a mage or thief or anything that isn't the Night, and, well, they ain't doing so hot. Luckily, I went with the Night because I'm boring, and after fighting bosses, I realized... One, you gotta be on your toes like no tomorrow, and two, if you can't hit hard, you're dead. Bosses are just way too fast and hit way too hard, and I can't imagine people finding any other class to be fair. Ah uh, yes, fair. Y'all remember that concept, right? Remember when that's how you convince people that Dark Souls 1 wasn't being a jerk about things? It's challenging, but fair. If you die, it's your fault, not the game. Well, Dark Souls 3 kinda forgot about that, and that brings me to my next point. Number four, rushed or just hard? 
Honestly, this one just depends on what kind of person you are. But personally, I don't think they tested this game as much as they could have, especially in the later half. Dark Souls 3 kind of goes for that Bloodborne level design, being more linear in my mind, like the world feels interconnected like Dark Souls 1, but instead of being stacked on itself, the world patterns out like a big tree, with the exception of maybe two or three areas. And that's fine with me, to be honest, because it's obvious where you're supposed to go. But then it becomes an issue when there's only one new way forward and then there's a crazy difficulty spike. Did anyone else have this problem? Like suddenly a big beefy mega FU sword stopped doing decent damage and suddenly you're getting killed in two shots? I know grinding is always a solution, but I don't know. It just feels like the game didn't anticipate the actual level you would be at when you enter some of these areas. And while we're at it, Lothric Castle, delete block reported, I can't deal with this. It's like From Software wanted to make you run past everything because Lord knows I'm not dealing with this today. Number five, bad design equals difficulty. Now, hear me out on this. I don't think Dark Souls 3 is too hard, and I totally love the challenge of the Souls games, but, 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 but got news for you. Any game with crappy design can be difficult, and while Dark Souls 3 is pretty consistent, it messed up a few times that caused me to die, like the hitbox freaking out, collision attack and a few other things. The point is, I hate how From Software gets a pass on this crap. If a design flaw or glitch makes the game harder for whatever reason, then it's not an error. I just need to get good, son. Uh, you suck. Keep in mind, saying Dark Souls is good because it's hard is really an insult to the series because the games are so much more than difficulty. Sure, it's an aspect of the game, but even if you're one-shotting enemies, it's still fun to play because of the exploration, combat, customization, and general vibe. I just wish people would actually understand that sometimes hard can equal bad design. I mean, we hold that standard to most other games, but because Dark Souls' reputation revolves around its difficulty, then suddenly the game isn't the problem, I am. Number six. This game is definitely not for newcomers. Like I mentioned before, difficulty and Dark Souls go hand in hand, but after playing this game, this should definitely not be the first Souls game you pick up. While technically you don't need knowledge of the previous games to get into Dark Souls 3, I feel like From Software struggled with keeping this game difficult for experienced players and kinda overdid it a little bit. Half of the challenge of Dark Souls 1 was figuring out how stuff worked, where to go, and what to do, and there weren't that many Souls veterans since Demon Souls had arguably a small following at the time. Then Dark Souls 2 comes out and people complain it was too easy, but yeah, of course it would be easy. You already know what you're doing. And the life gem thing really didn't help all that much. And then From Software is like, okay guys, we gotta make sure this game is hard for the veterans, and it seems like they kind of forgot about the newcomers. Like, I get it. It's the third game in the series, and it's kind of inferred you should play the others. And the series is doing well because of the veterans, but wow. Even if you know what you're doing, this game is very tough because enemies knock off half your health and have way more stamina than you do. I just feel like they cranked up the challenge of the enemies because nothing about the world design was going to surprise veterans anymore. We too cautious, we too sneaky. And it also didn't help that they copied and pasted an area with just extra layers of spook from Dark Souls 1 because we already knew how to walk around the darn thing. But it just seems like From Software was more concerned about making a hard game over a fair game if you feel, and a part of me is kind of glad this is supposedly the last Souls game because lord knows how they're going to crank up the challenge for Dark Souls 4. But just pro tip, play Dark Souls 1 or 2 before buying this because you're going to rip your hair out. Number 7 calm down. This has less to do with Dark Souls 3 and more Souls games in general. You know, it really is the community that has shaped how the series has developed. But then again, the Souls community is passionate to an almost scary degree, and people have a right to care about something they enjoy and even defend it when people crap on their favorite games for no real reason. But I'm just gonna be brutally honest, and I'm ready for all to poop yourselves in the comments, but then again, if you do, you're just proving my point. Why do people get so pissy when you make light of Dark Souls and or point out some of its massive flaws. Because for some people, this is the only outlet to feel validated. You wouldn't dare belittle the thing I worked hard at, spent hours of my time on, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did it, you did something hard, congrats. Who wouldn't want a sense of superiority? Not everyone can beat and play Dark Souls. I can excel at something difficult, like what a big boy I can be. It gives you the feeling of anything you can do, I can do better. I understand though, I've been there. I've used Dark Souls to establish my quote-unquote skill all the time. Getting aggravated when people tell me Dark Souls ain't so great or I'm bad out of the game, etc, etc, but passion is incredibly aggressive around Dark Souls, and lordy, the backlash sometimes. Like, GameSpot gave Dark Souls 3, what, an 8 out of 10, and people were livid. You can't blame the passion, of course, with something so complex and difficult, it would attract people who want to feel special and skilled, and would do anything to defend that. And while any form of challenge, virtual or not, can boost our egos, teach us discipline, and the will to try, try, try again, at the end of the day, what is Dark Souls? A video game. 
a medium designed to entertain in one way or another. And Dark Souls 3 did not always keep me entertained. But then again, that's just me. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this game a lot and can say it's a must play and definitely is better than Dark Souls 2 in many areas. I had never felt so drawn in by Dark Souls lore before, some of the bosses were amazing and I constantly want to explore, even after getting smeared across the wall. To me, I viewed Dark Souls 3 as the real Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 2 really should have been Demon Souls 2 or something because let's be real, Dark Souls 2 has more in common with Demon Souls than Dark Souls 1. And wow, that must have sounded like total gibbers for some of you. But Dark Souls 3 is not perfect, and while it has very, very good aspects as a whole, this doesn't really put the other games to shame. It just kind of hazes somewhere in the middle for me. But hey, if you think this is the best Souls game, power to ya. You obviously saw something I didn't, and don't let my obnoxious opinion ruin that for ya. My word isn't law after all. I mean, I could praise the game a lot more, but then again, no one really cares when you kiss the game's butt for like 10 minutes. I just wouldn't be so nitpicky if it wasn't for the fact that we have seen certain things done better in previous games. Overall, Dark Souls 3, while enjoyable, is more of the same because it struggles to create new, unique, balanced challenge. And for the record, and a little side note here, for people who diss those who use summons in the game to get past bosses, who cares? Like really, either way I'm gonna beat the boss, you're gonna get the same endings. Why y'all gotta poo poo piss over people who want to enjoy the game the way they want to? I get it, you gotta prove your game skills by beating crap alone because that's some weird video game code, but like chill. From Software put a multiplayer in the game for a dang reason. Why wouldn't I utilize a major feature of the game? It's like using overpowered weapons or starting class. Why the hecky would I purposely put myself at a disadvantage unless you're some sort of masochist? Like I got news for you guys, if I'm not having fun solo, you can bet your sweet baby butt I'm a summon in to have fun you humorless elitish degenerate. Hope you all enjoyed this video guys, and if you agree with me, that's great! And if you want to murder my insides, that's wonderful! Why don't you tell all your friends about my awfulness and share this on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr so they know you hate me extra extra much. Later, you big nerds. Buns out. I literally just dropped the mic. Buns is out. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs>